what the Church of Scientology is so afraid of. This, this is SPTV. Welcome, everyone, for a bit of SPTV. AA Run is here, joined by Sterling. How's it going, man? Pretty good. How are you? Oh, no, no intro. <laughs> I did the SPTV intro this time. <laughs> okay. Okay. Uh, okay. Usually, I would have your channel already pulled up here. So let me do that. No worries. Just to show everyone. Uh, we got some great stuff to talk about today. Uh, one of the things I'm super excited to talk about is the prospect of Bijou Phillips and Danny Masterson uh, showing the world what a hypocrite and what a horrible father and a degenerate Tom Cruise is um, by comparison. Because I believe that Bijou Phillips is about to grant Danny Masterson's request um, for visitation, totally torpedoing the idea that Scientology's rules are the reason Tom Cruise disconnected from his daughter, Suri, when in reality, it's because Tom Cruise is a horrible person. Right. Um, okay, right. so if you're not subscribed to Sterling yet, you can find him over at Sterling Tompkins on YouTube at Leaving Scientology and Loving Life. Thank you. And we might be joined by Jackson here soon. We'll see. Not quite sure if that's happening. Um, okay, so Tom Cruise, Danny Masterson, David Miscavige, where would you like to begin? Well, you know, I did, I was, we were talking, we were talking a little bit about Danny Masterson the other day, and I did a, a quick video on just the subject of him go, going away and how that whole thing went down with the declare issue, which I found, I mean, it, it's fascinating uh, to me that, you know, I, people have said, and, and you can, you've, I've heard it like even in my chat the other day was, well, I said, Scientology is changing things. They're doing things differently. And someone uh, piped in the chat and said, well, I, I don't get how are they doing? They're not changing anything. They're not doing anything. And I would argue with that, that even this silent or whispering declare thing, which started a while back and, and particularly in regards to Danny Masterson, it's just a fascinating change of events, because as you and I know, being longtime Scientologists, that if it's not in writing, it's not true. Uh, you're not supposed to accept word of mouth of anything. Um, yeah. Hey, let me course. bring Jackson in real quick since oh, he's here. He's here. Nice. Hey, boys. Hey, Jackson. How's it going? <laughs> What's up? <laughs> not too bad. How you doing, man? Pretty good. I, I got some, I didn't mean to step on your toes. We talk about, got, I got some new eyewear I wanted to check just to increase so i can read the small print but um i want to know how that looks <laughs> these were on sale okay and then uh and then these i saw these these just stuck right out oh okay wait wait a second yeah no you're going with those ones <laughs> this one's going with those ones yeah kind of looks like i got something coming out of my eyeballs <laughs> and then uh and then finally this is more of a summer summer taste but uh oh they're upside down you know, I've been shopping at the wrong place. <laughs> the, these are compliments of John, John, uh, Sadowski. Sadowski. Yeah. Sostovsky. Sostovsky. So, and I, I brought a friend to sit in. Um, he came over to watch, uh, watch a Phillies game. I mean, the Phillies game tonight. Well, they're not playing tonight, but the, uh, the Eagles. So yeah, we have them. We have them. Oh, you got them with the juice. <laughs> My mind's riding the barrel pretty hard here. Yeah, um, yeah. Anyway, Little Captain Navy mean... of the fake Space Navy. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that's right. But to just you know, that's that's lowly. That that's that's peasant whiskey. I'm sure when he hits London, he's gonna <laughs> or when he hits St. Hill, he's gonna be drinking high and scotch. Uh, and he probably will need that for the entire event, which because we have no clue what he's gonna be talking. God, about. you said the word peasant. That re immediately reminded me of one of the tech films I've I played a peasant in. Oh, you did. Were you the peasant pig that got spit on in the French Revolution? Uh, I don't remember pig. In... There's one scene where he goes peasant pig and oh. spits on the guy. <laughs> oh, yeah. You see, and that was a that was a phrase from the movie. Yeah, I do not remember that. Films. What film was it, Aaron? I forget. Oh. Uh, okay, yeah, I do not remember that at all. I remember my favorite line from. Oh, Andy... it might have been the auditor's code. Okay. Oh. Was was you um. Oh, I can't remember. I'll remember it later on. <laughs> I want to say Sterling that Rick Cruzen, I think, was the the guy that said "pez on pig." Oh, really? Okay. Well, no one knows who Rick Cruz is. What are we Rick, talking Rick about? Rick Cruzen. Rick Cruzen was an mm. audio staff member. Um, married Marty's ex wife, Jure. He he was a long term. He'd blew numerous times, but he was a staple in the audio world at Golden Air Productions. Okay. Yeah. And uh, 
He was one of the characters that said what you said, Aaron. You peasant pig. Okay. In that film. Anyways. All right. Here's Jackson's YouTube channel. If you're not subscribed to him yet, Gary Jackson Moorhead. Oh yeah. Okay. So let's. We were talking about. Um, we were talking about these verbal declares, these secret declares. Uh, it's crazy. I mean, this never. This did not. To my knowledge, this did not exist before Miscavige invented it sometime post 2006. But Gary, what are your thoughts on that? Is, did this exist before? What was that? I, I before yeah, whispering declares the instead oh, of issuing goldenrod. Yeah, um, the word yeah. that was over a period of time where it transitioned into that, Aaron. And and um, I do particularly remember uh, there was this, these two individuals, ex ASI staff members, Eric and Chris Johnson. Um, that Eric had a bad bout of seizures, uh, was looked after for a number of years. Anyways, after they had left, they called into the booth and, um, um, what it was, was a reference check on a job that they were applying for. And, um, from that conversation, I had to call Shelly and speak to Shelly. I told her what I told him. And I basically gave a 51% good review, 48% bad review of their performance at Golden Air because they had blown so many times. I thought I, I was doing good by entering that they had a tardiness issue. So I thought that was the ethical thing to say. Shelly called me up to her office and her and Dave were there. And she kind of jumped my, my, my chit about um, when people leave, it's all about them, uh, Scientology still being available to them. So we didn't want to create any roadblocks for for them creating a future for themselves. So she kind of slapped my hand for uh, having said what I said about their tardiness. So you were in trouble for not giving a more glowing review? Yeah. Okay, how's this relevant to what we're talking about? Well, uh, and from there on, it was also, uh, she stated from that, that when it's not about the declares or anything. It's about people staying in touch with Scientology. So Eric and Chris Johnson, she had told me that was my first, this was my first introduction to a double standard that we purposely did not declare them. <clears throat> um, even though they should have been per L Ron Hubbard directives and advices. Wait, um, why should they have been declared? What did I miss? Because they had basically, they were in, in base staff and they left the Sea Org, and they automatically get declared. But they routed out. They didn't blow, right? Right. But the, the double okay, standard... But, but if I don't understand what you're saying, then neither do the viewers. Okay. Okay. So they should have been declared because why? Uh, Just because, because of the Scientology policy of declaring anyone who routes out from the, in? The L. Ron Hubbard advice about anybody, even though you standardly route out, you are still declared. It's an added stink to your effort of leaving the Sea Organization. Okay, but they didn't get declared, right? That's correct. But they should have. And this is, I guess, at least my answer, I'm hoping, supports your question in that the, the introduction of the double standard, the silent declares. Um, if they if they were to be brought back, allowed to come back, they'd have to go through ADE, do the ADE step. So they're in a declared, declared status state in, as far as their minds were. But we didn't publish anything on purpose to keep it quiet. I'm sorry. Let me, let me clarify something. They routed out of the Steorg standardly. Yes. Were they allowed, if they had paid their free letter debts, to be public Scientologists? Uh, after doing ADE. I know it doesn't sound right, Aaron, in that sense. No, that no, this... no, no. You're saying there's a special set of rules for in-staff yeah. members. I get yeah. that. But um, so they didn't get declared, and you were in trouble for not giving them a, gl a glowing enough job review but they okay so you're saying it was a secret declare yeah are these it, did these people ever get stay in scientology i actually do not know to this day from from that last phone call i had back in the early 90s i actually don't know okay good question um but they were high profile security particles that i was dealing with um being handled with velvet gloves by rtc because they were they are ASI staff, ex ASI staff. Right. They they got busted. They chose to leave. They were brought from Los Angeles to the IT base to go through their ethics handlings and be under watch. The whole nine yards. Turns out Eric had a very significant medical condition with seizures, um, like grand mal seizures, and um, that was just one of my pretty early on significant experiences with experiences that. of handling. 
sensitive particles, uh, you know, inside. Okay. Jackson, okay. if I didn't mind me asking, sorry. So, um, and I get, I get why that was relevant as far as the experience. We, I mean, we're obviously talking about um, today, Danny Masterson, a celebrity. Now, I believe you actually knew Danny Masterson uh, yeah. and even uh, maybe hung out with him a little bit when you left. Uh, so you probably know a little bit of his dynamics, his family in relation to that, because we are talking about the significance the of the fact that, you know, too late, a little too late, but that Scientology apparently based on reports has declared Danny, but in a whispering campaign rather than a, a broad statement or an in writing goldenrod. So I think it was more of a take on what's, what's your take on that? What, what do you think you dealt you dealt with? ethics and those sort of lines for the longest time. So yeah. I think that's more where uh, we were going with that question, if you don't mind. Well, um, from my experience, and like I said, um, Eric and Chris were the beginning of me now experiencing this from moving forward in my SEER career, where special cases would be authorized by Damon Scavenger. He was only the only one that would authorize such, such things. Um, otherwise, what do we do with these staff would be presented to him in Danny's case. Um, uh, that would all be decided upon and proposed to Dave based off the effects it would create by either publicly declaring him and what that effects would have um, to the image of Scientology and uh, or, or not publicly and what benefits it's all self-serving. It's just so self-serving to the double standard of the written, documented, green and white policy of people being declared for them being found guilty for their criminal acts. Um, right. So can I jump in here? I want to talk about two different double standards. And OK, because there's one double standard of actually declaring someone, but not broadly issuing it in writing. And just because right. because because for the record, unless I misunderstood. Uh, Jeff Augustine said that his sources were not shown the written declare. Even right. those sources were just verbally told that Danny was declared. Right. Um, which is similar to what happened with me when Jenna Miscavige started speaking out publicly in 2006. Daniel Presta from OSA Inc. called me and said, well, she's not actually declared yet, but the policy on suppressive acts still applies, that kind of stuff. Right. So, so there's two different – one example of the double standard is actually declaring someone not really putting it in writing, not really, you know, showing it people in writing, but expecting people to honest to God, treat them like an SP. Right. Right. There's another double standard here of saying that someone is declared, but not actually demanding that everyone treat them like a full blown SP. Here's, here's an example of what I mean. Johnny Maurer, the notorious child abuser from California. Mm -hmm. He was secretly declared, shipped off to Clearwater, allowed to work at his dad's company here in Clearwater. I think is Mike Maurer. I think his dad's name. Uh, they were allowed to associate with each other. He was allowed to work alongside Scientologists. He was allowed to earn a living. He was allowed to exist in the Scientology ecosystem. But his dad wasn't allowed to talk to him when they weren't at work. <laughs> wow. So, so in other words, he was secretly declared and he was supposed to work on his A to E steps. For the viewers, A to E is the steps you're supposed to do to get back into good graces with Scientology once you're expelled. Right. But he wasn't uh, – it was so secret, Scientologists weren't even told he was declared. To me, those are two different double standards. Um, do you guys agree that these are two different things? Oh, well, yeah. Absolutely, Aaron. And, and okay. the fact that we're having to go to such great effort to explain – in Scientology policy, there's no shades of gray. You do this, that's the result. You get declared. That standard is to be maintained across the board as a Scientologist. As time went on, of as I gave my example, and the more effects that people, I guess Osa and Dave realized the um, the outcome of having declared people is those declares would hit the internet and it would create a bad image for the church. Plus, it was an internal document which was out security, reaching the outside world. So that's where they stopped handing out what was to be a published declare that's a that's again a policy so to go to all you know you know up in the left hand corner it says all Rumimio and all orgs all staff on any declare that once was a held standard per policy and as time went on starting in the 90s if i remember correctly that progressively changed because of the effects and the internet being the church's worst enemy 
is... I just that, feel the need to jump in here, and I'm sorry if the chat thinks I'm being too impatient, yeah. but I have to have a very clear idea of no, where we're going I, in this conversation. I appreciate you, okay. you having that. So yeah. there's a difference between Miscavige not issuing things broadly just to keep the uh, information from leaking and just doing this thing where you don't have to really declare people anymore. It can just be a rumor. It can just be verbal. It doesn't even have to be approved. It doesn't even have to be anything. To me, there's, these are completely different things, and I'm wondering which one of these things that you, you think is happening to Danny Masterson. <clears throat> hmm. That's, that's a good that's a good question. Yeah. Um Danny is in, and again, this is kind of a, a new a new ball field the church is finding themselves in, and they have a once publicized celebrity in the Scientology community um now being found guilty and held accountable for his actions and uh in the in the society's justice system contrary to all the information that was kicked around about Danny leading up to him, you know, internally, all the information kicked around internally about Danny's status from the original publicized reports of Danny's being taken to task for his essays. And he had been um, found guilty by a jury of 12 of his peers yet. Um, that was, that required its own internal hands. It just, it just, it's so messy. It's really hard to explain because it's so outside of what really should be done. But the decision making is internally from everybody below Dave uh, would be making these decisions and then proposing what it's to be and either getting rejected or being approved and therefore being able to be executed. So decisions would be flipping all the time. Um, Literally, I would be, as an example, I won't give a specific topic, but if I was in the position of you need to come up with a solution to what we're going to do with Danny Masterson, it's your your job as a security chief of the imp base to propose it. Um, I propose it. It would be run up to Dave, reviewed quickly, and either approved or disapproved, and the actions would be carried out immediately. And that that's how the decision would happen, that fast. Um it wasn't like proposing for the new color scheme for the buildings around the property where that could be take weeks to get approved in sensitive issues like this. The people that are involved below Dave are having their little meetings and discussing what we should do and what the out, what the uh, fallout's going to be. If we choose that way, what the positive is going to be, if we choose that way, making their proposal, submitting it to Dave and getting authorization or not. And then, Executing sure. it. Okay. Um, uh, let me see. Next one. This is for both. This question is for both of you guys. Um, I want to know if you agree with me on this. And I'm almost hoping you don't because it'll be more interesting. Um, <laughs> so I, I firmly believe, based on the policies of Scientology, Tom Cruise did not need to disconnect from Surrey and he did it anyway. Uh, whether that's because uh, uh, Katie's team insisted on it and he had to cave or whatever. Uh, divorcing Tom Cruise is not a suppressive act and does not make you an SP. Uh, right. Katie Holmes has never said one bad word about Scientology. Technically, there's nothing Katie Holmes did that would make her declared an SP, but we all know Scientologists see her as one for leaving Tom Cruise for leaving Scientology. Right. But even if Katie, um, if anything, she's like a low-level SP because sh she's never attacked Scientology. Okay. Um, Tom Cruise would have had a right as a Scientologist in the world of Scientology to maintain a connection to, did he just remove himself by accident? <laughs> <laughs> he may have. <laughs> or he had to, oh, there he is. What the you you good? Crack. Yeah, I'm good. <laughs> that was strange. Were you done with okay. this conversation, Jackson? No, 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 no. <laughs> <laughs> so Tom, I, I Tom Cruise, sorry about uh, that, people. Now, Wait, now, now it's my turn to be a little long-winded. No, but okay. when we disagree, we're just going to exit the video, Aaron. That's just so you know. <laughs> we're just going to cancel out and then come back. Okay. Here's, what's, here's what I predict is going to happen. Okay. Uh, I'm, I'm being so long-winded here. If Let's say Danny's actually declared. Whether it's a whisper campaign or whatever. Let's say Miscavige has decided this dude is declared. We don't care if it's verbal, whatever. He's declared. Do you think, according to the rules of Scientology, Bijou would be allowed to grant his request to have visitation with their daughter? No. Okay. Go ahead. Start okay. Away. So, <laughs> so I, I, you know, one thing that's always been a bit, it's a great question, Aaron, and I agree with you and I disagree with you, though I don't think at the end there wasn't a, a point to necessarily disagree, but 
What I do think is I don't know, or nor do I understand, even though Danny Mashton really arguably was a pseudo Scientologist. Okay. Um, mostly just by association. We know he did not progress up the bridge. We know he was a terrible, terrible example. Uh, I don't even think he was, you stated, or you've heard that he wasn't even at the big meeting with Tom Cruise. Um, he wasn't he, allowed to be there because yeah, he was considered right. too out ethics. Right, exactly. I yeah. can feel with him on that one. I was never called any big meetings at Gold, so I understand how he feels with that. But um, <laughs> um, So you go, I wonder how much of a Scientologist Bijou is. What, does she lose anything? Does she have, is, does she have any perks that are going to go away by her just walking away from Scientology at this point, or do they hold something over her? So in that, in that regard, I go, you know, is she going to do that or not? What, and I get based on the policy, based on the policy, we could even assume at this particular point in time, that Bijou has not been told Danny Masterson isn't a suppressive person. And they could be doing the whispering campaign to the people that are just outright complaining, saying, what are we going to do? What are we saying about this? How do we have this guy convicted? And we've not shunned him yet. So I think there's a lot of questions up in the air about that. Uh, but I would be really fascinated to know what Bijou's actually thinking. Okay, Jackson, let me ask you a different question. Okay. Do you think, according to the policies of Scientology, Tom Cruise had no choice but to disconnect from Surrey? That's correct. Explain. Yeah. Well, um, because basically, she, what do you call that? The sucker punched Tom publicly. Um, she, she put a plan, a well, well thought out plan together to when he walked in the door, uh, handed him the paperwork. As I understand it, this is what happened. I, I really truly don't know, but by my understanding of what happened is she had a well thought out plan, plan to, um, provide uh, a separation of stepping away from Scientology and protecting her child and what to do with Tom. And when he got back from where he was, um, here it is. He probably talked it over. Dave got on the phone and said, that, you know, this woman presented this to me, one, is leaving Scientology, strong arming me in this. And um, well, you can't be in touch. You can't be in contact with her. Let me and frame my question. Yeah. Let me frame my question a little differently. Okay. And it sort of depends on which argument people want to make. Does Tom Cruise have to follow the rules more than your average Scientologist? Or is, or is there a special set of rules for Tom Cruise that he doesn't have to follow the same rules as other Scientologists? Which side of that equation do you come down on, Gary? A special set of rules as, as okay. directed by Dave. Yes. So then I'll, I'll bring up my example from my childhood. My younger brother, he's six years younger than me, Darius DiMartino. His father, Frank DiMartino, was always a very dedicated Scientologist. He got himself declared a suppressive person at one point. Um, Darius's father is not the same as my father. D Frank got declared a suppressive person while he was doing his A to E and whatever. He was still allowed to, okay. this was after his, uh, his dad and my mom were divorced. He was still allowed to pick up Darius, take him back for the weekends for his visitation and everything. The fact that he was an actual literal declared SP did not um override the legal rights that he had to take visitation of his son and right. everyone in Scientology in Philly knew this it was not a big deal and that's just the way that it was and that's not someone like Tom Cruise who can have his own set of rules so and I realize Scientologists are going to have different stories and different experiences yeah. with yeah. this sort of subject on parental custody and SB and not SB and all that kind of shit but but that's why I go I agree with you. There is a special set of rules for Tom Cruise. Yeah. But Tom Cruise sees himself as more of a dedicated Scientologist than everyone. And I feel like he would hold himself to a standard he wasn't even required to hold himself to. <laughs> yes. Right. That, you could have said that better. Yeah. Right. He's a zealot. He had so, no reason. She didn't commit anything in writing. Anything that is dictated by the Church of Scientology as a suppressive act, she did not do. If you're, if you're following the letter of the law exactly. She did not do that. So... Her being and if anything, yeah. you're right. I'm sorry. There, uh, Jackson, there's another example that I want to give you. Okay. When it comes to Clearwater, Florida, keep in mind, Mike Rinder doesn't live in Clearwater, Florida. Right. I'm the biggest SP in Clearwater. Yeah, buddy. I'm on the my neighborhood association, not an HOA. I don't subscribe to HOAs. A no. neighborhood association, we have monthly meetings. Yep. Do you know who comes to my monthly meetings? All the OTAs who live in my neighborhood. <laughs> and they come specifically because I'm there. 
because they don't want to seed ground in the community to a big bad SP. Oh, Scientology awesome. actually tells as many Scientologists as possible to come to my meetings. They don't harass me. They talk to me. We 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 chit chat. We laugh. We joke. We pretend like I'm not a big bad SP and they're not <laughs> OT8 Scientologists. And um and you go that should be against the rules except. Right. They don't want to cede ground to an SP. And that's one of my arguments for why Tom Cruise, not only in any normal circumstances, should have been able to continue seeing Surrey, but even in extraordinary circumstances, I, I think you're not going to cede your own daughter over to the SPs. You have, right. to, you have to keep her as much as you can to prevent her from being fed all the evil black propaganda from all the big bad SPs. Right. Where do I have it wrong? No. <laughs> You know, no. Aaron, I actually, I, I, to be honest with you, I can't answer that because, um, it, it's, you can tag Sterling in if you want. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, what I, I'm, I'm trying to, you know, not give a long winded answer is what I'm trying to formulate. So go ahead. <laughs> go ahead. I, I don't want to, I want to, what about the short right. quips, the, the B roll here? <laughs> yeah. That's what I'm trying to muster up here is a short quips. Um, you know, people leaving without it being publicly announced, Aaron, no goldenrod, it's a secret thing. That is more designed, from my experience, to hold, uh, attach a ball and chain to the individual. To the hold, You can leave, but you need to hold up to our stated standards and not go public and all that. And eventually, whenever you want to get back online, you can get it. But you are declared SP. And that holds a chokehold on them. And they walk away with that continuing the fear factor as a Scientologist and I don't want to harm or create a bad image for Scientology. So they know they're declared and if their way back in is going to be through the ADE steps. Um, they never know what happens thereafter. They, you know, uh, they never know what happens thereafter. You know, we all leave blindly. One day there's 600, how many people there were? Sterling, 800 Something personal like that, yeah. friends of mine on the base. Literally one day and the next day I'm gone. Nobody knows anything. And it's, 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 um, kind of hard to explain but it's very simple action in that um it's all for the purpose to hold that person in a state of fear attach a ball and change right i can't by the way jackson i can't say 800 personal friends i'm sorry because because oh. the uniform i see pogo was so stingy over the, the 15 <laughs> years i was there i didn't get shit from her so she is not on my list of friends oh. um and there's a couple other i could obviously lift off jenny devock was another one yeah. but um no i I agree with you. There, there's a different set of rules there. And that's what I think you're saying. There's even a different set of rules for Miscavige's family. Right. Absolutely. Yeah. Because it, he would never openly declare Biddy or Ronnie, not in a million years. No. He'll never see an issue, but he's okay with declaring Biddy's younger sister, Sarah. No problem with that. None wow. whatsoever. He also has a double set of standards because when David Miscavige's mo mother, Loretta, uh, rest in peace. She was a wonderful lady. Uh, passed away. Well, Dave went to the funeral. Biddy and Ronnie went to the funeral. He had connection with them. He had to talk to Ronnie about the real estate holdings and whatever uh, will stuff was happening after that. But he could absolutely have a conversation with them. No problem. David Miscavige and Ronnie Sr. both went to Loretta's funeral? Ronnie Jr. Oh, Ronnie Sr. may have been there. I don't know. But Ronnie Jr. for sure was there with Biddy. Are you serious? 100%. And Ronnie Jr., as he told the story to me, had to tell Dave to back off because Dave was trying to tell him how to handle real estate. As you know, Ronnie Jr. has, has been in real estate for like 20 years now, 15 years, whatever it is. So, oh, yeah, no, there was a little. David Miscavige oh was personally visiting with and talking to his declared SP brother. Fucking jerk hole. Yeah. Oh. Yeah, I'm no I think even Jenna mentioned it in her book. Uh, possibly, I can't. I can't remember for sure. But oh no, no, the rules do not apply to him. Just like we talked about his little basketball thing in, in the junior league with you know uh, all the other, all the other smaller people uh, when he broke his leg. He had no. He's not. He doesn't play by anyone else's rules. And I I'll love never forget that, that day when he showed up at just, that. Just so Scientologists, there. you know, know it. Yeah. Okay, so let me ask you guys this. Danny Masterson has requested visitation. If Bijou grants the visitation or doesn't fight it, do you think that means she's on the, her way out of Scientology or are they operating by their own special set of rules? 
Ooh, that's a good question. Because that entails her to bring the child, their their child, down to the, wherever Danny's at, and go through that process and sit in the cinder block room with the stainless steel tables and say hi, Daddy. I mean, that's a whole traumatic experience. So, but imagine what an enemy they're going to make out of Danny. And I, I know, know people have said uh, he, he won't speak out right away. Believe me, when his appeals are over, if they take his daughter away from him. Oh, that door's you, kicked open. Danny. Come on, come yeah. on now. Danny, so it almost yeah. goes, so it almost goes, so do you unofficially <clears throat> declare him and you don't make it official so that when Bijou gives him visitation, it's not technically against the rules. Now, I realize everything I'm saying implies that anyone cares whether someone's following you your rules, what? but I'll tell you, if I'm a rank and file Scientologist and I see convicted serial rapists and Scientologists in good standing or not good standing, we'll never know. If I see these guys getting special treatment, I'm pissed. Yeah, but right. uh, Aaron, you just made me realize something is that very solution that these people responsible within the church to come up, what are we going to fucking do with this? <laughs> if well, if Danny, if you keep your fucking mouth shut, you'll be, you'll be allowed to see your kid. But, That's uh, probably yeah. a wagering factor for him to keep his mouth shut. I, I tend to think from time to time watching so many SPTV channels that – if Osa watches a majority of these, we give them a lot of good <laughs> ideas. I will. <laughs> Sometimes we may even direct them down the right path. You're just <laughs> realizing that now, Sterling? I mean, I that's, no, no, we do no, that. I'm, and Aaron does that every day, all day long. I'm saying it publicly. I'm going, oh my God. Sometimes they may, like, I would imagine they sent a report to Dave going, I think we should go this route <laughs> without yeah. telling you. It was based on a live they saw. With Aaron. Yeah, what are they, what are they exactly saying on SPTV? True. That's so true. <laughs> but like, I, I, I would rebuttal. see... The, the the fact that Bijou's that, that Danny's been granted visitation rights is the church attorneys presenting it to his attorneys that uh, either Danny plays along with this game or he no longer sees his child and we pull the complete trigger on him and declare him and they'll deal with the fallout of him going public later. But they're they're putting that ball and chain around his neck going, you shut the fuck up, you see your kid. Right. And, right. you know, that's the uh, maternal instinct. Sure, I'll Because here's what I'm hoping. I'm hoping that Bijou stays in Scientology, that Danny is declared, that he makes a request for visitation. And, you know, e even if Bijou fights it, but the court's granted anyway, and she has to do it, it still shows that Bijou's not going to get expelled from Scientology just because she maintains a connection to her daughter and her daughter has a connection to Danny. And the whole thing makes it clear that Tom Cruise is just a giant hypocrite and a degenerate and a horrible father because even Bijou and Danny are allowed to share custody and or right. visitation. But well, Tom Cruise wouldn't. Not couldn't. Do wouldn't see that's the stupidity of dave is he doesn't see these full pictures until we are now talking about an sp he's gonna like, i fucking told you and, guys about that and arguably ago. tom cruise yeah yeah um, and arguably tom cruise i've heard it from people that know him that met with him several times well in the church i'm not gonna name the source uh but just the, the guy he's ambitious he is driven he is not that smart and, and that does make sense to me because if he's he's still a card-carrying scientologist he can't be that smart because he has access to everything. And to make the statement, I'm going to do a video about this later this week, to make the statement in a Scientology event that he would like to be out there on vacation, he would like to take time off, is the most insulting statement I've ever heard. I was a Sea Org member when I heard that, and I thought, are you kidding me? Are you joking? And I was I was a giant Tom Cruise fan when I was in the Sea Org before he was even a Scientologist, I knew he was a Scientologist. So I lost all respect for him at that particular moment because I knew like, what are you talking about? You get time off, you get the weekends off all the time. Yeah, um, yeah anyway, so he he's arguably a dum-dum. And, and Aaron, you brought up, I think in a recent video of yours, um, speaking of this very thing, I mean, um, uh you know, he's Dave still has to talk to, he's still got a, a public interaction to occur with the IS event. So that is also being taken into account of what the fuck am I going to say? And he's yelling at, the, at his minions around him. What the fuck am I going to say? What the fuck uh, am I going to say? Let's use the F word a, a, oh, a slightly sorry. less often. What what the frickity frackers <laughs> am I going to say? What the I was flippity, doing so good, Jackson, holding back my swear words. And then flippity flips and I had to pull that trigger. Sorry. <laughs> but you you were really going down a very valid path in that recognizing 
the challenge is that, and Dave's created this own mess for himself. I think he pulled the trigger way too early on having a next event because I, I don't see them, him having anyone, another one anytime soon after the IS event, but so much is already put into play now that he's committed to it. But this, Jackson, they've already promoted the, uh, the, the, the new year's event live at the shrine auditorium is back. Wow. Oh, they really? They promoted it oh, in that's the Auditor the first, Magazine. That's the first I heard it. Oh, okay. Well, that doesn't mean he has to show up. Has he ever not? Well. Only to Auditor's Day. Auditor's Day was the only event that he wouldn't show up to. Somewhere. Yeah, but he doesn't have any executive staff, no technical representation, no no other people to fill that role. Yeah. But Just anyways, I, I want to stay focused on you bringing up the fact of here and now. He has trouble with this whole Masterson thing. Um because they they're gonna have the, the, they're asking and, and and they're potentially gonna ask him at least Dave is aware that the, it's being chewed over in their own minds the whales minds how can we have a convicted um, R in our ranks and he's not publicly being put on a display under the suppressive person declare it's true <clears throat> it's yeah. true it, it because anyone anyone else who had who, yeah. I mean, I, when I was in the Sea Org, there was some public guy who had just confessed to basically abusing, I think, his own kids, not someone else's kids, uh, in the most horrible way that we won't have to detail. And he was ordered to sec checking, and it was already known this guy was being declared. They right. were just squeezing him for as much money as possible before they declared him. And and so it's like it's very unusual for someone. You know, as soon as I say this, I realize it's not true. I was going to say it's unusual for someone like Danny who's done what Danny has done not to be declared. But look, James Barber didn't get declared. Right. And James you know, Barber didn't get declared. here's an analogy because I kind of I want to help provide a specific thing. OK, the the, the movie industry, um, that's all labor contracts and, a, a you know, that's a money making machine at play. Right. So people's agents have to learn how to negotiate one of their one of their actors going astray, either getting caught up in a drug drug field thing, a car accident and harm some, you know, just some sort of public image occurrence. Right. And that happens. It comes out to wash. They get held accountable in the Scientology world. Kind of the same theory is at play is the image it gets created as these actions. So they start the church mucks up this whole situation and could have kept it simple. It's like Danny, Danny got, you know, we don't have any say in it. He was, he was held a criminal uh, uh, found a, an actual criminal and did what he did and now he's in prison and so be it let's move on but no they make an, a, an issue out of it to preserve their image unnecessarily i mean they're just mucking up something they don't even need to really do address to be honest with you only to maintain that suppressive person status that that last final chokehold control factor they have for their own parishioners i mean the the idea of a suppressive person being declared has been neutralized by it don't mean anything. It just, you can say it by dinner mustard, somebody, 10 people can be declared, but it usually per policy takes a whole string of efforts from the, the ethics gradients. That's what a right. normal Scientologist thinks is like, what, what happened to applying L. Ron Hubbard policy? And yeah. suddenly, go ahead. You just reminded me of two questions. And then, and then I want to get onto the Tom Cruise smuggling David Miscavige uh, yeah, across yeah. borders in his private jet. <laughs> Jackson, there's two issues that I want to get your opinion on. Okay. Um, so I learned something this week. I learned that in Scientology, there used to be something called a writ of expulsion. Yeah. yeah. And, you know, the ethics gradients, the last two ethics gradients in Scientology, the final ethics gradient is expulsion. The one before that is declaring someone a suppressive That's person. Correct. And I've never understood why they were separate gradients. Do you have enough historical experience to know when and where and why the writ of expulsion stopped being used? Yeah, because uh, in the justice system, no matter what uh, gradient was applied, there was always intent to keep the, a door cracked open for people such as the ADE steps. A writ of expulsion, as I, as I understood it, shut that door and anybody forever returning to Scientology. But the, but the very ethics policy that gives the ethics gradient of expulsion is the same policy that says never shut the door. So that couldn't have been what that was. Well, that's that's what I understood and had on, you know, has as as understood the entire time I was there. If you oh. if you got declared and then you got a writ of explosion, you couldn't even do ADE. You were just forever 
cast oh. to be gone. And- well, someone sent me a copy of their writ of expulsion, and on the writ of expulsion, it, it gives them the option to do the A to E. Oh, so- see, so that was my misunderstanding. So oh, why I had I had both. always understood it that way. Huh? I know. Yeah, so why have both? Yeah. It doesn't make sense. I know, no. and it's, no, it again, <laughs> they, they muck up their own set standards. It's just... Yeah. In, in, okay. Okay. It does, because it's probably, it's part of admin <clears throat> administration technology that L. Ron Hubbard wrote that absolutely makes no sense, and everything is circular. So, yeah, it would make complete sense that they had another name. <laughs> if this whole conversation, go ahead, Aaron, go ahead, Aaron. Yeah. Well, that brings it, well, that brings me to my second point, but was there something you wanted to make about the first point? Just this whole conversation should be proof of how much Scientology has mucked up their own sim- simplistic justice system to where there was one standard to function from, and then when the double standards came in, it blew everything out of the water. It's yeah. almost like let's compare it to some technical thing. When you get a go in for your counseling, get a session, you no longer have to, have to get an FM because you only ended the session because you F ended the end of the session. So you don't need to go to the examiner anymore. But all these years, people went to the examiner is that set standard, the verification that the auditor did a good job. And just using that as a small example, but they just. <laughs> Dave Miscavige has. Did someone say you don't have to go to the examiner anymore? No, I'm just using it as an example that oh. that it 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 was that it's that easy to change their own ways, but yet I all see. these all all the parishioners are happy go lucky going along and doing the standard thing, and they expect if they do a violation or some some high crime, they're going to get declared. It's that simple. But then they start witnessing and hearing all these double standards, and they're going, "What the hell? What the hell? What what the hell?" But nobody and the fear factor keeps them questioning it in place okay here's the second point here's the second point it's a very interesting conversation to have whether if someone goes well danny's master since it's not a real official written declare it's a verbal declare it's one of these rumor declares secret declares technically a secret declare is still in writing you just don't really inform anybody about it right there's a very interesting conversation to be had as to does it even matter is there even really a different like if it's coming down from David Miscavige, it doesn't matter if it's real or fake. It's real because Miscavige is saying it's real. That's, That's right. one interesting conversation to have. Right. Right. Yes, yeah, sir. But then on the other hand, you go. But if there's no difference between putting it in writing and not putting it in writing, then explain to me why Jenna Miscavige was never declared. Explain to me why Ronnie Sr. was never declared. It, they're clearly in someone's mind. There's a difference. Yep. Self-serving yeah. to Dave. I mean, that's so what, what are you guys thoughts on one? Is there really a difference these days? And then help me understand, someone seems to think there's a difference. Right. You know, I've kind of I've kind of hit my end of this conversation. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, I think we've talked about it enough. It, 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 it's what it, it's going to play out. And it's no, no, you're out. not getting the question. I, yeah. I want to. Well, what do you mean? It's got, I'm not talking about how it plays out. I want to get your opinion on. We'll just take it one at a time then. Yeah, no. Ask again, please. Does it really matter if it's a quote unquote secret verbal declare? Is it, isn't it all the same these days? Yes. Correct. I think it does not matter. It does not matter. Right. Then why didn't they declare Jenna? Well, Jenna's still, Jenna's still 12 years out, right? From, from today, I believe is when she left. So there's a big time difference in that. And a lot has changed internally since then or at least reportedly has changed so why not jenna jenna's i think is a slightly different thing in that she is a miscavige everyone knows her that's purely a bad optic for david miscavige and he wanted the least amount of people possible to know about it which was wonderful because then jenna completely ruined that plan uh by getting on major talk shows by writing a book yeah. uh and all that sort of stuff so no i i don't i don't think it particularly matters i think i think he's kid gloves with his own particular family oh yeah for sure and or anyone that related to him mark told me uh w- when looking at the spy files that that dave apparently asked for reports specifically on justin jenna ronnie biddy and myself to go directly to him uh, which I was surprised that I was included on that list. I can understand Justin and Jenna, but uh, it, it, yeah, I mean, he, he is so acutely aware and careful about his, his personal. And he's obviously blown that too, because I think, I believe his sister got arrested for drug charges and, and slumlording in, in clear water, which is like, I mean, that dude, look at that dude's family's more messed up than pretty much anyone's. Uh, but again, I think uh, as we've stated with everything, it is different. It is solely based on David Miscavige's whim, who we're talking about, and how it relates to him in general. 
Danny oh, Matson yeah. doesn't relate to Dave personally, obviously, but then that's just an optical thing for Scientology yeah. in general. Again, like you say, Aaron, I don't think it makes a difference at this point. We also know SB declares are just complete trash because they can really declare you for anything. Hey, I got declared for going to a baseball game when my first declare issue came out on the 4th of July to see the Dodgers and Angels. Like, really? You know, that was it. That's why I got declared. They had nothing else yeah. in me. So, yeah. <clears throat> well, it's funny you mentioned Jenna being a Miscavige because she, she was clearly aware that that mattered when they were going to put out the final issue on her. She was like, don't put my, don't put Jenna Hill, put Miscavige on it. I want everyone to see that this yeah, is Miscavige buddy. you're doing this to. Put Miscavige <laughs> on it. And they wouldn't do it. They put of it course. out as Jenna Hill. Right. <laughs> oh, yeah. Even when they issued a, an internal document about my mom, Biddy, when she was there, and I'll never forget this. It was uh, some, some golden rag. I can't remember what exactly it was about, but she wrote, they wrote Biddy Blythe. And I'm like, Biddy, yeah. she was still married to Ronnie at the time. I'm like, okay, that would be Blythe. a great example. Those two yeah. examples you folks gave. Yeah. If it's all self-serving, what it's yeah. if it's going to mess with Dave's, the cut of his jib, things are going to change. It's going to be out. custom made to satisfy Dave. It's out. Yeah. So, now so, we're, so we're they don't get yelled at or go to the, go to the to, RPF. To whether Dave could fit in the cargo bay of a G550 was that what we were jumping on to? Um, I don't yes. think he would be held in the 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 spare wheel cover. <laughs> um, no. No, no, that they wouldn't have room for the wheel to go up. Jackson, did you ever fly with Dave, uh, private, or or Noah make any arrangements for those or not? No, during, when Short the big answer. IRS announcement came, I was all prepared too. When the IS event was going to be held in Australia, my tickets were paid for, everything was scheduled, and then suddenly they got their IRS. The war is over. And oh, the, but the ticket? Event, no, so you were going to fly I commercial never, with him? Uh, I actually don't know. I mean, I wasn't yeah, aware enough. I just, I just knew that my flight and I was going to be flying with Dave. So how wow. we were going to get there could have been on the Partridge bus or uh, a G4. I don't freaking know. No, yeah, no. I mean, clearly, and I've said this in other videos, and Aaron, I know we've talked about it. I, I have a personal beef with the fact that this guy is spending parishioner money and, and living the life of a billionaire. Oh, and that Aaron had a fantastic own. conversation with his lawyer friend, Zach. Did I get that right? Yes. Yes. Um, the, the, the linebacker, well, actually basketball player. Um, and so I wanted to chipe, uh, chipe, chirp, chirp, Chime whatever. In. In, yeah. <laughs> On that, because, because I, I, I'm quite familiar with the, with private aviation and stuff like that. And I wanted to, uh, and again, I'm, I'm sure we have pilots and even stewardesses and even people that operate, uh, at private airports like that. So I wanted to just clarify some of the things I heard just to make sure we're exactly specific on that. Now, uh, most people see private flights on Instagram and you see all these cool videos of the G fives and the global express and the Falcons. These are all, these are all private airplanes. They all range in sizes. Some are intercontinental. Some, you know, can only fly five hours on a single tank. Either way, in most cases, when you're flying international and I'll give a perfect example of the Los Angeles area. So a few years back, if you were flying from anywhere in Europe or outside the United States back into Los Angeles, you would have to fly back into LAX because LAX had an immigration station uh, right. for people to come in and get checked through. Okay. Then due to the large amount of traffic into LA, a smaller airport in the Valley, which is the Van Nuys airport, they actually set up a separate little wing of immigration so that private planes coming in, to the United States would be checked through immigration. Every private plane must have a manifest and a passenger list. It's before they leave the country, they must have a scheduled time for arrival in the United States, yeah. vice versa. And you do go through every normal procedure that any commercial passenger would go through, except that it's more of a private environment. You're not waiting in a long line because they have to schedule you. So they don't have too many people landing at the same time in the same right. place. And they do that at what's called an FBO, which is a fixed base operation. So Van Nuys, for instance, has about four to five FBOs, Atlantic Aviation, Signature Aviation. So when you fly in, in some cases, the person, the customs agent will come right onto the plane. They'll collect your passports. They'll check everyone on the plane against the manifest of which they were provided. Right. So Dave, if he was not on the plane, when they landed, they obviously would have known he was there when they took off or was reported to be there. And they're going to question that fact thoroughly. And yes, your bags are going to go through a scanning process on the way into yeah. the country. Okay. So no matter what, 
he's going to be, someone's going to be able to track and find out where he is or if he was on the manifest, et cetera, et cetera. And I'm sure so you cannot sneak someone in on a suitcase in a private jet. Unless you're flying into Saudi well, Arabia. You want to hear a funny thing. When I was traveling with Dave once, yeah. we had the hired security, the talent security force with us. We called yeah. them the hired heaters because they carried <laughs> heaters, which was another name for a sidearm. Um, the, we used to coordinate our movements to have the hired heaters go through security, the scanning devices, set the alarm off to distract them so Dave could walk through without having to go through that procedure. That's how what? detailed his little entourage would be dialed. I, you lost me there. I got to oh, hear that again. So you imagine did... Dave, Wait. his hired security forces, and me going through the airport to check in on a flight. Commercial or private? Uh, it was commercial. Okay. At the, I mean, this was back in the mid-90s, so um, early 90s. So uh, to avoid Dave, it was just whatever that was, shit would just come. I mean, stuff would come out of his mouth. Sorry about that. Stuff would come out of his mouth. It's like, I don't want to go through that. So they would develop the plan of the hired security would go through to set the security alarms off. So they get the pat down and Dave will be scooted around. Oh, he was just trying to avoid a pat down. He still had to go through the metal detector and everything. Uh, yeah, but the distraction and attention, it just, I'm trying to highlight the attention that Dave, how much it bugs him to have to go through people where Sterling says, he still has to present his passport to people and the manifest that to verify that Dave is actually on that plane. Dave can't get around that. And that bugs the crap out of him that um, the people that are checking him, are they cleared? Has anybody checked this person that is checking my passport before they wow. check my passport? That's actually an interesting point because technically speaking, whoever's working at those private airports could serve him. Uh, well, absolutely. Mm -hmm. and, hey, uh, it's hey, not like those conversations. Hey, Aaron, Again, just so you know, it's not like those conversations haven't already been had. But we're, we're either we're either telling people how to serve them, or we're telling OSA how to get around getting them served well, at these at these locations. OSA, um, the OSA, OSA listeners in in the chat right now are doing a, a own separate debrief of oh shit, Dave's tickets already bought. And you guys, you know, anyway. Now, now let's make it clear too, though, if you're a celebrity, because people keep mentioning the Amber Heard situation, and I don't know how she did that. Of course, if you have a carry on. Um, and you keep it close to you, that's a potential. You could still walk through security with the carry-on and it doesn't go through the scanner. But again, you would be distracted. You would be distracted by a celebrity for sure. And the one thing that's nice about immigration in these FBOs is that of, they're a little starstruck. They will be. Now, of course, you're not going to be starstruck yeah. by Dave at all, <laughs> right? If, if nope. anything, you're going to want to probably be like, a oh, extra. little boy, do you want a set of wings okay. on this flight? Is this yeah. your first time? Do you want to see the cockpit? <laughs> you They're going to give him a pair of wings? wings thinking this is the first time. And, you know, and, and even when Dave goes in the cockpit and he asks the pilot how we're doing, he wants to look out the front. The, hot, the height of the front dash on the G5 is too high for him to see out. So he's just going to have to stick to his window. Um, that would be the only way to see out. But um, yeah, so no. Uh, to, just to clarify, yeah, if he he's not sneaking around that way. Now, inside of Europe, or not really inside, inside the United States, absolutely, because no one's going to check. This would even extend to Travolta's personal airway runway on his property. Dave still couldn't get around immigration because John, to hold his FAA license, has to uphold uh, compliance yeah, through the there. government travel policies. And Dave couldn't just fly in and out of Travolta's property and bypass everything. He still has to... Yeah. Because he goes in the air, FAA holds a tight line. There's only one place I know, Aaron, in like in the Middle East, where you can actually go through U.S. immigration as you get on the plane to fly from the Middle East over to the U.S., and that is Dubai uh, or UAE, United Arab Emirates. And you can actually get checked through. So once you land, you can just get off, pick up your bag and go. And that's that's the only time I've ever seen that. But um, again, that doesn't apply to Dave. He's private. That stuff's super restricted. I, I think wow. the only country he could fly into without being noticed would be would be Saudi Arabia. Um, because and Munchkinville. Yeah, Munch if, you're a Munchkinville. Prince, if you're a prince in Saudi, uh, they don't check on the way in at all. So yeah, that, that, that's how they used to bring all the booze in and then sell it for like three times the price. Wow. Um, Did you hear well, um, <clears throat> my lawyer friend Zach's uh, crazy proposal for if you were a process server and you were willing to do some time in jail, the way, real way to serve Miscavige would be to... Uh, a crash a car into his motorcade, have a car accident yeah. so that everything had to stop. And um, I, I was like, you could do that. He's like, you can do it any way you want, but you're going to, you might go to jail for it, but you right. could still actually serve him because that's the only time Miscavige is going to be on public property. He's going to land in a private airport. He's going to drive on public roads. He's going to pull into the St. Hill property. 
he's exposed when he's on the public roads. You right. know, it would be amazing if they did a Mission Impossible serving where they where they somehow blocked the traffic, got his car to stop, and they had a guy craned in like Tom Cruise and drop down and then just serve him the little piece of paper and then pull up again. <laughs> 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 Let's see it. Come on. Like, oh, you know, they man. need to get creative, right? Um, but anyways, yeah. Again, and before, I want to make sure I make the point. Again, under the radar Scientologist, Dave Muscavage is flying in a private jet on your hard spent backs on the dollars that you donate to the Church of Scientology. He's living like a king. Yeah. Um, come to grips with that. It's not a good thing. It's terrible. <sighs> he lives like a king and he thinks he's above the king. So I don't even know what you would define it after that. But <laughs> that's his mental state. Everything is just a, it's just amazing that. Yeah, Do you know what I'm surprised? I'm surprised that he didn't. Uh, uh, going to Sea Org ranks. So Elron Hubbard called himself Commodore. There was at one point five or six captains. I'm surprised he didn't come up with some rank between captain and Commodore to call himself so that he didn't have to share a rank with him. Yeah, and that's funny. It's funny that you mentioned that. I guarantee you he dug deep, and I think that's a little bit what tantalized him with coming out with chairman of the board because mm. I do remember hearing the 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 folklore that how he came up with that name is through the Frank Sinatra at thing out of at Vegas. Cause Dave used to frequent Vegas. And I was going to say this on the heels of Sterling, that moment you felt insulted by Dave's actions. Um, he, I mean, the chairman of the board, that was not so non Seorg. It's just so non Scientology, but it's, it sounded cool and it looked good on, on all the envelopes of the traffic. The communication yeah. would go to and from him. COB I'm chairman of the board. What fucking, what freaking board? No, let's remember, he got his power. He got his power from the lawyers and having the external communication lines. The external people is how he was able to start and continue his power. So that's not Seerg related at all. Yeah, um, yeah. And he got put in that position. It's funny that, you know, but I'll, uh, I'll whether intentionally or not, L. Ron Hubbard had Dave Miscavige in that position <laughs> and he picked the worst person. Uh, possible, the, the most ambitious and vindictive person to be in that position. And that's how he crushed everyone along the way up. Yeah. It really is. Yeah. I remember the first time truly feeling insulted by his actions when I was up at the Star of California that the clipper ship that was built on the outside of a building to look like a ship was docked at a Polynesian dock, Aaron, at the Golden Era. You've probably seen pictures of it. Um, I was in the officer's lounge of the bar up there and Bonnie Musell, who used to be serve Tom and him the meals, um, Dave and Tom walked in and there, there was that old circular round oak table that was in that room. Remember that Sterling? I do. I do. Okay. They both walked in and sat and, and slammed on the table. These two big fat rolls of cash wrapped in rubber bands. Like, like, uh, it was, bigger in circumference in a softball. It was really hard for them both to hold in one hand, but they both slapped it down and they, they just said that that's what they won in Vegas. And there was over 20 wow. grand per roll. Wow. And I thought to myself, he's a Sea Org member. It was just an insult that I'm back here working and he was in, he just came back from Vegas gambling. It was, right. you know, of course you couldn't say anything, but I just distinctly remember. And Bonnie and I looked at each other when they walked out the room and they left the cash just sitting there. I don't know what happened to it, but it was there. They both had their own roles. And um, somehow when chance. they came back, there was only 15 in each role left. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and Bonnie had a new car. <laughs> Jackson, Jackson, was, Jackson had a pair of shoes that didn't have holes in them anymore. Yeah. See, now, now that, <laughs> this is an interesting contrast, right? So I didn't see that, Jackson. That would have shocked me to the core. Yeah. I saw the motorcycles and I saw the cars. Aaron, you didn't see any of that right yeah but what now was the only about? thing i saw was his bmw and i didn't right. care about that right 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 and, and and you arguably at the time you told me you would have been like okay great if he had but you would have been if he has it then i should have it <laughs> i wouldn't have cared about any of his material okay. um things i would have been like sweet i was team miscavige all the way yeah, yeah i mean I so were we even but even more so than l ron hubbard like i'm not one yeah, of these people who that. only cared at, like uh, you know there was a, a strong contingent of people who were really angry if they thought he was doing something that was contrary to what L. Ron Hubbard wanted. I could not possibly have cared less. I was like, is L. Ron Hubbard here? No, where is he? Dead? Okay then, I guess we know uh, who matters. And Dead. that's what he wanted. Yeah, that's what he wanted. He wanted that that new sort of, I think, Scientologist in point. But I, I told you earlier the other day, it tickles me to death that the biggest pain in David Miscavige's ass 
is another guy from Philadelphia. <laughs> I, I love Oh, love guarantee that. you. Dude, I love Re that. Besides the fact that Justin helped Rosemary escape and Jenna wrote a book and all of it, that just cracks me up. I mean, it's just coming <laughs> from all ends. Um, if you don't mind, I have a hard out at, at uh, 335, 340. Um, so in two minutes for seven minutes? Yeah, but we could do questions if you want to. I'm yeah, sorry. Let's do a, a few quick super chats. Yeah. Um, guys, if you're one of the almost 4,000 people watching right now on the three Holy channels, smokes. Hit, Hello, hit, hit, that, hit that like button for us, guys. It actually does help. Wow. These are AA Ron numbers. Okay, Joni Cummings. Thanks, Aaron, for doing the video yesterday. My pleasure, Joni. Uh, tell Perian Sterling, um, who do we need to bribe to get more content from you? Aaron. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Dave Owens. If Tom Cruise didn't separate from, di didn't disconnect from Surrey, it would set a bigger precedent than some goofball like Danny Masterson. Folks may say, but Tom is seeing his kid. Yeah, I mean, it's true. It's true. That's right. Steve Britton, what are the implications of a court mandating visitation by a child to an SB parent? Does that make the child PTS? It would definitely make the child PTS, and it would probably make Bijou ineligible for auditing until the child turned 18 and disconnected from Danny. Do you guys agree with that? Yes. Any other take on it? I know Sterling's like, hurry no, up. I was reading no. the chats. I got distracted. <laughs> There's some great, great chat. I'm sorry. I was reading the chat, so uh, forgive you me. You can star them if you want. I started one that was hilarious about the swearing. So please, if you see that one. Okay. Yeah, yeah. All right. Tell Pirian, what is the Dave, uh, David Miscavige in a suitcase fetish about? <laughs> Bring oh out God. the gimp. Oh, my God. Bring out the gimp. Yeah, right. buddy. We, we were just conjecturing about how he may get into the event without being noticed. Yeah. Oh, I just realized I'd skipped a bunch. My bad. Fallon, um, question. Do you know if the cast of that 70s show is losing out on syndication royalties because of Masterson? I see a lot of old TV shows streaming, but that 70s show isn't one of them. What they missed out on was the exclusive streaming rights that nobody opted to pick up. That's wow. what they lost out on. Um, another earlier one from Telperion. Uh, do Danny, Scientology, and Bijou not have a ton of collateral on each other? Scientology... On additional Jane Doe's to turn Danny's sentence into without parole. Danny on Scientology's cover up, Scientology on Danny on Bijou's wrongdoings. Isn't this a Mexican standoff? Yes, it is. And um, I'm not sure you're allowed to say that word anymore. Uh, my, 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 my head, my head is spinning <laughs> after that last one. Like um, I got a headache from reading that. Uh, John, John Sostowski, Jaskin, uh, Jackson, do you have your Apple box boy? Yeah, he's up there on the shelf uh, right there. Nice. Dave Miscavige says, hi there. It's Captain Davey from the Fake Space Navy. See, that always creeps me out when that pops up. Always. Uh, yeah. Oh, my God. That freaking hair is. Yeah. And that was the last one. Whatever you starred did not show. It didn't. Uh, let me see if I can. Oh, unless man. you start it much earlier. I'm uh, much earlier. Yeah. Like, like, oh. like I, I started, I started halfway through Jackson's first explanation. So it was like 30 minutes ago. Oh, I got it. I, I might have unstarted because I didn't know why it was there. Sorry. Oh, yeah. So it was just, it was just funny. It says. He says, my husband says he doesn't drink, he doesn't smoke, and he doesn't swear. Oh, 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 fuck. I just left my cigarettes at the bar. I'll be back in a second. <laughs> I did see that one, and, and I did unstar it. I did. Uh Thank you. Thank you so much. <laughs> All right. I know you got a heart out. So uh, let's thank everyone for tuning in this afternoon. And uh, if you haven't hit that like button, please do. If you haven't hit that subscribe button, please do. And uh, check out. I'm going to link to both Sterling's and Gary and Jackson's channels in Much the description down Much below. appreciated, Aaron. All right, guys. We'll talk to you soon. See you later. Hey, you Bye, people. Black and roll songs, kick right on this guitar. And if you want to see an, a different one of my videos, uh, then you could click right inside here. If you have subscribed or not, subscribe. Right here. Bye.